For at TV, the world is thinking. Ahora Harold nos va a explicar qué es. And Harold's now going to tell us a little bit about this. Es un producto muy joven utilizado en la alta cocina. It's a, a product used very recently in high-end cuisine. Y que ha permitido hacer elaboraciones que antes eran imposibles. And it has allowed us to create new uh, different elaborations. Por ejemplo, un sorbete de alcohol. For example, a sorbet made from alcohol. El alcohol es, no congela. Alcohol doesn't freeze en un congelador normal. In our conventional freezer. Sin embargo, a menos 196 grados que tiene el nitrógeno. But in minus 196 degrees, which is the temperature te permite of hacer nitrogen, un sorbete de alcohol. This will allow you to make a. En este caso es un sorbete de caipirinha. An alcohol sorbet. In this case, we're seeing a caipirinha sorbet. Con mucha alcohol. With a lot of alcohol. Como es una caipirinha. As uh, you would find in a caipirinha. Pero este permite hacer este sorbete. And this allows you to create this sorbet. Esta es una es una una de las utilidades que tiene el nitrógeno líquido. This is one of the uses you can give to liquid nitrogen. Ahora vamos a ver otra. We're going to see another. Que es la cocción en frío. Uh, which means cooking using uh, free freezing, este by es un, freezing. Es un puré de pistacho. This is a pistacho puré. Con un poquito de agua. With a little bit of water. Muy simple. It's very simple mixture. Lo introducimos en, en el nitrógeno. We dip this in the nitrogen. Y vamos a conseguir lo que vais a ver ahora. And we'll achieve what you will see now. Figuraos que fuera chocolate. Imagine it was chocolate. Haríamos la trufa más mágica e inimaginable. You would make the most magical chocolate truffle. Porque por un lado queda... ¿eh? Eh. Um, we've got to stop you right here because it's it's Harold's turn. Nitrogen. You've dealt with nitrogen before, which is something that that really was put on the map by Ferran. Um, how is it being used in the service of actually eating food that we recognize? And did you learn a lot from seeing nitrogen as Ferran uh, used it? Well, I think. Uh, this is a wonderful example uh, along the lines of what I said about the, the coconut dish of something that you might classify as scientific simply because you don't find it in traditional kitchens um, that in fact is being used for uh, pretty basic familiar traditional sorts of ends which is to make a delicious ice cream that you couldn't make using a standard ice cream maker because it doesn't get cold enough. All liquid nitrogen is, is a medium that's really, really cold. And that allows you to, to change the, the structures of foods in ways that you can't if you can only get down to the temperature of, uh, of uh, an icy, salty slush. And that was a technical, technological development. You know, ice creams and sorbets didn't exist until the middle of the 18th or 17th centuries because no one knew how to bring the temperature of, uh, of liquids below the freezing point, and you had to do that if you wanted to make something sweet. So that was a technical, technological development in exactly the same way that this is, the difference being that you can mine salt or get it out of the sea. You have to work pretty hard to get liquid nitrogen out of the air.